G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, Friday afternoon here in Australia, market down just a fraction, like less than it's a tenth of a percent right there, so quite small. So again, we've got a lot of sideways action going on at the moment. Uh, some altcoins are doing all right, others aren't, and it just get you get the feeling like the market is just waiting to make a move. And I, I get the feeling like it'll be a decent one. I'm just not sure if it's gonna to be to the upside at the moment. I, you know, everyone, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, everyone's expecting this to play out like it has before. I just get the feeling like it's not going to. You know, you'll be able to look back and in the longer term, it'll have played out somewhat similar, but it's just not going to be, you know, what everyone thinks it is. I just, I'm not sold that we are just going to fire off in this month, November and December, into these crazy prices, uh, and then it all, you know, basically goes pop. You know, we'll we'll have to wait and see. I could completely be proven wrong, and it could play out, you know, very similar to that. But I just, I don't get the feeling. I'm more sold that we probably get a lot of sideways action going for a while with some big dips before we finally get. Uh, you know, again, a big run. I get the feeling like it comes later next year. I think, you know, people talking like March, uh, Data Dash, you know, Nicholas Merton even talking about it, maybe pushing out to November. Uh, that's more where I'm leaning to. I don't think it's going to finish uh, this year before December. Never financial advice. I absolutely uh, could be wrong about that. I'm no savant. I don't know the future, but that's just the feeling I get. So for me, yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on things. And as I said the other day, you know, if you're well up, you know, just consider taking profits. I'm never going to tell you what to do. You've got to make your own decisions. You know, you should all be adults if you're watching my channel. And, you know, if you're adults and investing, then you should know the, the risks of doing so. And look, me personally, I don't like the idea of someone else controlling my money because they won't take much risks with it or they'll be too risky that's that's usually the way it goes they're either just too risky and they'll lose a lot they're you know completely irresponsible or they're just too conservative conservative and they don't really make you enough and then you got to remember whatever they do make they're still charging you and well even if they lose sometimes they probably still charge you so i really like the idea of people educating themselves about how to invest and doing it wisely and smartly now, I'm not going to tell you crypto is the wisest uh, and smartest place to do it because it's still too new. But for me, I just see this as the next emerging kind of, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The next emerging sector. That's the word I was looking for, the next emerging sector. And I think this is in the infancy and I think, you know, really amazing gains will still be made for probably the next five to ten years if not maybe even more and then after that yep there's going to be something else that'll come along at some stage but i think crypto is the thing to be in for the next at least decade now after a decade it'll be hard to say uh you know we'll just have to wait and see but that's why for me i'm you know i'm really into crypto because i just believe it's a space to be but it doesn't have a lot of history behind itself so there is absolutely still the chance that a lot of things could go wrong. But in all fairness, that's the same in any market. Just because a market's been around for a long time doesn't mean everything within it's uh, you know, good quality. Like the stock market, you know, most of it's held up by five stocks, you know what I mean? Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, Google and Apple, you know what I mean? They are the biggest stocks. They basically are the stock market really. And then you've got a whole stack of other stocks, but they, they're minuscule in comparison to those. And then there's a ton of other stocks that again, just like cryptos, you don't know where they're gonna go. There's no chance they're gonna last and you know, plenty of them don't do very well. The difference is cryptos move a whole lot faster, but that is to the upside and the downside. You know, I'm talking to you like you probably don't know crypto and you know, I can't help it because I just get the feeling like it's gonna be new people who are gonna watch my channel, not seasoned veterans. They, you know, seasoned veterans don't really need to watch a lot of crypto. I'm not saying they don't, but they do it more for sort of entertainment purposes than really any financial advice. But hey, look, I consider myself a bit of a veteran and I still watch uh, people on here. I really like uh, Aless Alessio Rastani. I really like Nicholas Merton. Uh, they're two really smart guys that I really like to follow. But look, I like BitBoy. Um, oh, God. Uh, the twins. Altcoin Daily. Like, really like them. 
there's plenty of good stuff on there but you just got to remember you know i don't know anyone who is a financial advisor out of any of them so again just be careful they're giving you their opinion and that's what financial advisors will do as well and as i said before for me i just i like the idea of being in control of my money myself then if it doesn't work out i've got no one to blame myself but myself but in saying that make sure you do plenty of research before you race out and start to do things like that if you're not going to do any then you may as well let someone else control your money because at least uh, they will hopefully have you know some qualifications and things behind them anyway i've gotten off track a little bit all right market is basically sideways not much has happened uh, gas price is about 11 dollars, so not great but again there's a lot happening uh, at the moment and I just I don't know if we're going to see low gas prices again outside of like a really big dip. If we get a really big dip, 50% correction or something, you'll see that come right down. But I don't see us going below $5 anytime soon. Again, not without a correction. All right, what's done well in the last uh, 24 hours in the top 100? Because we can see there's a mixed bag. You know, Binance Coin had a nice move of 5%. So there's always outliers. Well, there we go. Card Cadena, sorry, uh, still pumping. Oof. 40% nice OMG uh, engine another pump Audius and Chili's and again these were pumping before then they retraced for a day or two and now look at these pumps that's the way it works they are not going to pump like this every day non-stop it will get to some kind of point where again the traders are taking some money because they've gone long or you know done breakout trades and things like that and then they're going to move those profits into something else that's down and that's the way it goes so it's great that they're up seven percent today and i bet you if you went over the week they're all doing really well in the month they're probably doing uh, not too bad as well but there's going to be days where they are in the red and that doesn't necessarily mean sell again i'm not offering you financial advice but to try and time the market, you've got to take in everything. It's got to be a bit of fundamentals, uh, definitely a lot of sentiment. Sentiment gives you a good idea where things are, but it's not the be-all and end-all. I wouldn't even say it's 50% of it, but it gives you a good clue. Like if lots of people are still really bullish and sort of coming in, well, then you don't have to really uh, panic too much about selling. But again, if it's when it feels like it's getting a bit fever pitch you know you want to have really been selling into that not waiting for the fever pitch to happen because fever pitch doesn't last that long and it can end pretty quickly so it's got to be number one some education educate yourselves uh, you know have some targets or something like that that you're going to take profits and then again yep some sentiment and some ta because the one thing about ta and i love ta it's only good until it's not and it's usually showing you what is happening not what is about to happen ta uh 95 of it 99 of it actually i would say it's showing you what's happened it's not necessarily showing you what is happen it, what is about to happen I, I actually don't know of any indicators that are showing you what is about to happen it's all showing you what has happened so keep that in mind right some nice gains there, and look some good double digit gains as well what about losses though considering the market's down just a little bit well there you go Oh, SHIB is really getting hit hard at the moment. Loopring was pumping really hard. So was the Sandbox. Look, again, a lot of these coins are coins that were just pumping really early. So, again, next couple of days, if the market keeps going the way it's showing, within the next 24 to 48 hours, most of these will probably be back to the upside. I don't know about Shiba Inu. A lot of people... You know they rode a really big high and then there's people panicking and you know other people just taking profits and that you might be seeing some more downside before you see some more upside we'll have to wait and see but generally not too many double digit uh, losses and again this is just the top 100 just some single digit losses and again if you looked at most of these coins over the last week or more they've probably done pretty well so this is just again people taking some profits hitting targets and all the rest of it uh, and waiting for it to cool down again before they then uh, start to buy more uh, you know and go long and you know whatever it is that they're doing all right let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart as we can see this is where we're at still inside this channel we've had this channel uh here for ages the channel i mean is this blue channel this is the upwards trending channel bitcoin's been in it since way back in march 2020 it has gone above it a few times and it's even dropped out below it a few times but it is generally in this channel uh, it's been following this uh, for quite some time so what we can see is bitcoin again it's just traveling sideways at the moment it's not sure what it's going to do I'm not going to be surprised if we don't 
come down and test 57,000. I reckon somewhere around about here over the weekend is definitely possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm never giving you financial advice. I'm just saying I'm definitely considering about putting in some buy orders for Bitcoin down around 57,000. Now, again, I wouldn't be surprised if we have something even more drastic again, maybe come down to 52 or even sort of 48,000 just to really scare people out. Again, too many people are thinking, yep, this is going to play out just like 2017 and it's just going to start to rocket up and go to 100 and 200 and 300,000. I just, I'm not sold on that at the moment. I, look, if it does play out like that, awesome, that's great. I get the feeling like this is going to drag out for longer. I get the feeling it'll, again, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we make it up to kind of 70, uh, 85,000, somewhere there. We have a real big correction where we maybe come back down and retest 40,000, have everyone believing that that is the uh, bear market, uh, and then it goes back up. But in saying that, that could also be just a straight up bull trap. So we get up to 70, 85,000. The big players don't want it to. Uh, go any higher because otherwise everyone else starts to take profits they want to do it earlier and first uh, and that way they make sure they get their profits so again eighty-five thousand wouldn't surprise me if we then come down again i'm not saying that's what's going to happen it's just something that i've got in the back of my head for you know what do i do if that does happen for me again i've said this before i bought my bitcoin i was lucky i got it quite cheap i'm just holding on to it i don't need to sell it i'll be surprised if it ever goes back down to the price that i bought it at so it means i'll generally always be in profit and when bitcoin is going into price discovery i'm just not buying as much i'll dollar cost average into it but on a much smaller scale uh, when things are at all-time highs for me, I'm not really dollar cost averaging into anything anymore. Maybe initially at first, because it can be that kind of breakout trade. But uh, again, even that's very risky. I like to have done it all when no one else wanted to buy it. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. Uh, again, I don't think we're going to have any big dump yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if up around this $80,000 mark, we get a big correction, maybe a 50% correction. Uh, and then from there, it's just to see whether that... Uh, actually is you know the top and then we get a bull trap gets everyone to think we're going back higher and it rolls over or if it is again just another bear trap get everyone real bearish and then it simply starts to go up again i don't know i'm so confused my you know heart wants it to go you know up 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 but my mind knows that it just it doesn't last like that forever there's going to be corrections and unfortunately they'll generally come when no one's ready for them that is simply the way markets work uh, and look not even the biggest players know exactly when they're coming but sometimes they can coordinate with other fairly big players and you know play some games so keep an eye out for that moving on all right engine this is my biggest play in the whole kind of metaverse gaming uh sort of place and they have now uh put a hundred million dollar fund out to go into the metaverse now it's through their infinity token uh, this is something i really wanted to get into but i just haven't bought any uh, and things are pumping so hard that i think it's just going to be one that i'm going to have to miss and i'll have to wait until again there's some kind of big correction and that's where i'll probably look to uh, start making a play on that things are just yeah everything's basically at all-time highs are very close to all-time highs so i don't really want to put too much money into the market uh, at the moment i'm keeping more cash on the side now than i have uh, for quite some time but again that's not to say that i've really taken any profits yet i've taken minuscule amounts but if things keep going the way they're going then i'm definitely going to look at taking some profits again nothing major but just to make sure that i have cash on the side should there be another dip and as i've said if a big dip comes let's say bitcoin goes from eighty thousand down to forty thousand I'm not dumping all my cash into Bitcoin at 40,000. I'm just going to say, all right, here's a good place to start buying it. And again, because what happens if, you know, it really is the bear market and that 40,000 is nothing but a uh, bull trap and it gets back up to maybe, you know, 50, 60,000 then rolls over and again, we find ourselves down at 10,000 or something. I don't want to put all my money in at 40,000 to not have any money left over to keep buying. So I always... You know, there'll be some kind of point in the market and I'll say, this is where I'm going to start buying. When it gets to there, if it's a really, really good place, I'll deploy 50% of my capital. And then I just wait. 
and see what happens. And if it continues up from there, then it doesn't matter. I bought it at a really good price and I still have cash on the side. But if it continues to go down again, then I'll set myself another target. All right, so again, Bitcoin to, uh, from 80 to 40,000, bam, 50% of my money goes in. That's a 50% retracement. If Bitcoin goes down from 40,000 to 30,000, then I'll put another 50% of what cash I have left in. If it keeps going down to 20,000, guess what I do at 20,000? 50% of the cash I have and so on and so on until we find the bottom. But I'm always going to leave money on the side so that way I can continue to buy the dip. And that's you know my bit of personal advice to you, not financial advice. That's how you have money to buy the dip. Just don't throw it all in, uh, really no matter what the price is, because if it goes down, you've got nothing left. You know, on occasions you might get lucky and you know throw it all in at you know basically the bottom, and then if that happens to you, congratulations, you've timed the market almost perfectly. That is unheard of. Just so you know, nobody does that uh, without a whole lot of luck. No one's doing it really with a whole lot of sort of technical skills. It is just a guess. All right, moving on. Warner Brothers looking to launch a Matrix NFT. This is something I'm gonna to have to have a look into. I really like the Matrix. I'm looking forward to this new uh, Matrix that's coming out. So NFTs, I mean, they just continue to grow and you know, every movie's gonna have an NFT. And as I said before, I reckon there's going to be toys and things like that that come out. Like you'll buy a Matrix toy and it's gonna have a free NFT on there. So not only do you get the physical thing, you're also going to get uh, a digital version of it as well. I think, yeah, NFTs are gonna be massive. Now, not that all these NFTs are gonna be worth millions, no, a select few will be. Most of them will just be, because the market will be flooded, it'll be like anything. They'll just be, you know, there'll be a million and one NFTs out there. A very select few will do well, and the rest of them will just be sort of disposable things, really. Not that they ever really die on the blockchain, but you know what I mean. It's just like you know, any toy you buy as a kid very few of them ever go on to be worth a lot of money uh, because they just get wrecked but also because they're just mass made all right u.s lawmakers it looks like they are getting onto the sec and they're saying look you know you got this futures etf uh bitcoin etf out time to get a spot etf uh going because the future ones are trading at a discount so what they're doing is buying it uh and it doesn't you know they're getting it at a discount and it's not pushing up the price uh, and really, you want the spot ETF because that really then helps. No, it, look, it pushes the price up because it makes people buy real uh, Bitcoin. That's what we want. We don't want people buying, you know, paper Bitcoin. It's like paper gold and things like that. Yeah, you get the price appreciation, but in the end, you don't actually real, really own the real asset. So if you ever want to, you know, trade it in for the real thing, you can't. You don't own any of it. Whereas a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF. That is exactly what happens. You are buying the real thing. So good to see lawmakers are getting onto them, starting to apply some pressure. All right, bit of Australian news. So Better Shares crypto company ETF smashes the Australian record on opening day. Look, it did it within the first 15 minutes of listing. All right, and so what it is, is, is a fund, an ETF fund that enables investors to gain exposure to 50 pure play listed crypto companies from around the world, such as exchanges, mining companies, and equipment firms. I actually really like this. I think this is one of the best ways for people who don't know a thing about crypto. You know, again, they wouldn't know how to, you know, set up uh, cold wallets uh, or hot wallets and save the keys and all the rest of it. Well, now they can just do it the old-fashioned way. Go back to uh, your, your stocks and you buy uh, an ETF, which is just a basket of a whole lot of things as well. Now, I'm not saying this is the ideal way because you could be buying a whole stack of stuff that doesn't perform real well, but this is the best way for people who just don't understand, and particularly the boomers, you know, the, the, old, uh, the old money. They don't understand this uh, new game. Not most of them, not all of them. There's always you know, the exceptions to the rule. But now they can basically buy a stock that's going to cover off on a whole stack of crypto. Because a lot of them would be like, I heard crypto has been doing really good. I'm terrible with computers, excuse me, and I don't know what one's good. So what can I do? Hey, there's this ETF that's got 50 different uh, crypto things that I can invest in. And again, not so much the coins, but just companies and things like that, which, you know, plenty of money is to be made. So I like the idea of this, again, f to get the new people in uh, and the older generation as well. But, you know, the younger generation, 
you know, they're going to be so much more tech savvy than, you know, we are right now. I just can't see them using this kind of stuff. It's the same as the banks starting to, you know, offer crypto services. People will get onto that at first, but once they understand that, you know, they can make the 10% profit without the bank, as opposed to, you know, they go through the bank and the bank's getting the 10% profit and they're giving you 4% of it or something like that. That's, you know, banks are going to have a hard time staying solvent uh, in generations to come. They really need to, you know, come up with some innovative technology uh, to really last because I think 10 to 50 years, the way I see it, banks will be pretty much gone. You just, you won't need them for loans anymore. There's going to be smart contracts that do it for you. Yeah, so many things I think will change and it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But anyway, this is good. Uh, ETF absolutely kills it. And last but not least, another bank now is coming out. So ANZ, the Australian New Zealand Bank executive, has come out and said the weight of money that's been put into crypto means it can no longer be ignored. So again, I really like that Australia is getting on the front foot of this. We've done really well. I hope we can continue to do that. We're still waiting on true regulation here in Australia. But the indication is it's probably going to come next year. And from what we're seeing, it's probably going to be favorable in the sense that they allow it. We just have to wait and see how stringent it is. Because I, I agree with protections, true regulation that actually protects people. But we can't go back to the old regulation, old style regulation, you know. And these are more American laws, but they also got adopted uh, in other parts of the world where you've got to have $2 million to invest in, you know, this higher riskier stuff. Well, no, it shouldn't be about how much money you have. You know, if people are, you know, willing to buy something on their own behalf, then they've just got to accept the risks of that. It can't be just, oh, you know, we only let the rich do it because they can afford to lose it. No, they can't. No one can afford to lose money. That's the way it goes, because if they keep losing money, eventually they don't become rich. The thing that happens in those higher risky speculative ones is that's where the true unbelievable wealth generally comes from. By the time it is available to the regular Joes, you know, the you know, the massive gains are already gone. So that actually prohibits people from being able to change their lives. But I do agree that, you know, they, they claim it's trying to protect people in some ways and there's parts of me that agree with it, but mostly not. Uh, traditional finance, you know, that is going to be a thing of the past and this new, you know, financial, you know, again, I'm lost for the word that I'm trying to think of, the descriptive word, this transformational, generational, you know, change that's coming uh, through crypto, that really is the future. This old way we have of, you know, thinking of money, investing money and, you know, using banks uh, to, you know, hold our money and all the rest of it. I just I think the time for that is really really limited now not so much uh, again in the next like sort of five to ten years I don't see them going anywhere but I definitely think more 10 to 50 yeah I'm just not sure where banks are gonna be you know they they could still be around they could get really smart but I just I'm not sure all right look better a bit of a long one for me and again I've sort of you know uh, gone off on a tangent or two, but that's what I do sometimes. I'm pretty excited about crypto. I like to talk about it, hence why, I, hence why I get on here and talk about it pretty much every day. I think I've missed maybe two or three days in a year or more, so uh, I'm fairly regular when I'm here. Look, all I ask is one favor. You know, if you've enjoyed my content, please go down and hit that like button. I'm not getting a whole lot of likes, uh, and that affects how many views I can get. The more likes I get, the more views I get. So I'd really appreciate that. And also, if you want to say anything, go down below. Look, even if you're going to say something mean, fair enough, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> anything's better than nothing, I suppose. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.